Our special guest is the beautiful and multi-talented singer, dancer, actress, and producer, Mary Lou Metzger. Mary Lou, welcome, and did this program bring back some memories? Oh, it certainly did. And in some ways, it was like I was seeing it for the first time. Back in the days when we taped these, we were all so invested in our own performance and so much to think about that I don't think I ever really had the perspective of it as a show. And I see Jim Hobson's direction and how creative it was. Chuck Kuhn, our set designer, and Jack Denton, our lighting designer. It was about fashion, so Rose Weiss hit a home run. And Roselle Friedland and her hairstyles that matched every costume. Our wonderful orchestra. When I heard Joe Lavodi and Neil Levang play, I just felt so fortunate to be part of this amazing group of people. Well, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get into show business? <laughs> well, when I was a little girl, on Saturday mornings, little girls would either go to the roller skating rink or to dancing school. And I was lucky enough to go to dancing school. And my tap teacher danced in 42nd Street with Dick Powell. And my ballet teacher was in the corps de ballet at Radio City Music Hall. So I had some good training. And then I did a little theater production of Guest in the House. And when you're doing one thing, you hear about other things. I sang on the Steel Pier in Atlantic City on the Tony Grant Stars of Tomorrow show. It was a children's show. And uh, then I did a play called Guest in the House, where I was a little girl that was tried to fly out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's agent came to see them in the show and said they were looking for a little girl to go out on the national company of the Music Man. Mm. And uh, I went to New York and auditioned for that. What was it like being on the road like that, and what age? Well, I turned 11 on that trip. And for me, it was a great adventure. We did 113 cities, 229 performances. And the cast was wonderful. The audiences were wonderful. My mom traveled with me. And uh, to this day, I still have friendships with some of those people from those days. Well, we're all wondering, Mary Lou, how did you really get on the Lawrence Welk show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in college at Temple University. I was a music major back in Philadelphia. And at the time, there was a show on the air called The All-American Co College Show that Arthur Godfrey hosted. Mm -hmm. And they would get talented kids from around the country from the different colleges and universities and showcase them on television. Well, I pulled a boy from one of the accompaniment classes at Temple University and auditioned and they were lovely and they said, we're booked about six weeks ahead, but we'd love to use you. And I thought that was the nicest way of saying, don't call you us, we'll call you, I'd ever heard. End. Well, about a week later they called, someone had canceled on them and they said, if we get you a ticket, can you come to California? And I did. And my mom just happened to ride the train with one of our local assemblymen, Bob Hawkinson. And he'd gone to college with Myron Florin at Augustana College. And he said, she should go to a taping while you're out there. And my mom and dad had had their first date to the Lawrence Welk Orchestra back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So it was kind of a pilgrimage for me to go see the taping. Well, back in those days, if Lawrence ever saw anyone young in the audience, he would always go up to them and say, do you sing? <laughs> And I said, as a matter of fact, I'm out here to do the college show. And he handed me a microphone, and without accompaniment, he said, sing something. And I sang, How Are Things in Glockamora? And he invited me back to his dressing room after the show. And I thought I was going to get an autographed picture to take home to my mom and dad. And instead, I got an invitation to come down to the Palladium that Saturday night and sing with the band. And it had just happened that Norma had decided to stop traveling with the show. She was just going to do the television show and he needed one more person for a three-week engagement at Harris Club in Lake Tahoe. So I came out thinking I had a three-week summer job and he kept me. <laughs> That's a beautiful story. You mentioned your mom a couple of times. What impact would you say she's had on your career? Oh my gosh. My mom is my heart when it comes to my career. When I was little she would play the piano and accompany me on my auditions. She has been my strongest support, my sharpest critic, my dear friend, and I think she would have had a wonderful career in this business. She didn't really like being in front of the camera, in the spotlight, but she could have been a wonderful publicist or promoter. She loves it so much. 
You were on the Lawrence Welk Show, the original productions, for about 12 years. Yeah. What are some of your special memories? Well, one of my special memories was being able to bring my mom and dad down to the studio and dance in the audience for the first time. Then all their friends back home got to call them and tell them that they'd seen them. And uh, I loved dancing with Lawrence. I learned so much and was the luckiest person in the world to be teamed with Jack Immel. Uh, so much of what I've learned on the production end of things is Jack's creativity and imagination. I've been so fortunate in getting to sing with Sandy and Gail. You started out singing on the Lawrence Welk Show. How did they discover that you could dance? I think that was Jack Immel. Um, I remember it was a Halloween show, and Bobby and Sissy were doing a number, I believe they were scarecrows, and they wanted a little girl to kind of skip through the set and drop her basket of goodies. Well, I did sort of a follow the yellow brick road step through, and Jack said, I think she can dance. And uh, he must have talked to Lawrence, because they called me into the dressing room after that. And Lawrence said, you see, you didn't know you could do that, did you? <laughs> Well, you've been quite active with the Actors Conservatory Ensemble, something called Double Date, and Four Wonderful Women. What does all of that mean? Actors Conservatory Ensemble uh, is a producing theater company that some friends and I started in Los Angeles. We've an award-winning theater company. Uh -huh. And we started in 1990 out of a professional class that we took. And when our teachers passed away, we decided that we better put our money where our mouth was and start doing something. So we started a theater company and we've been very successful and we continue to this day. And Double Date was a doo-wop group that three of my friends and I started. We were in residence at Universal Studios for 11 years from 1988 to 1999. And that started out, we saw they needed a group to open their Mel's Diner, their 50s area, up at the Universal Studios tour. And we went in and auditioned. We put a four-song medley together. And they liked us, and they said, and what's your catalog of songs? And we just sort of looked at each other and said, you just heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they liked us so much, they were willing to trust us. And uh, we took a month, came up with about 60 songs, and... 363 days a year, five shows a day. Mm. We were in residence at Universal. And you're a Welk show producer. How'd that get started? That I owe to Larry Welk, who had faith in me to do something I knew nothing about. Uh, he was putting together a sales tape, and he asked me to pull some clips from the show because I was familiar with it. And midway through, he said, why don't you just go ahead and produce it? Well, fortunately, one of my partners in Actors Conservatory Ensemble, her father produced commercials, and his production manager, Wendell Wethington, took me under his wing and walked me through the steps and taught me all the stuff I know about video. So I've been blessed to be surrounded by wonderful, wonderful people. And you've been producing a Christmas show at Escondido for a number of years. That's been so much fun, because so often on the show, with an hour show, you only get to see a little bit of someone's talent. And when you can design a show around the people's talent, it lets you showcase them a little. Oh, these are my pals. I love that. <laughs>